Sorry. Thank you, Malcolm. Thank you very much for your explanation. My point was that I believe the Holy Spirit possesses self-cognizance. He can speak and say, me and I. He has self-will. Holy Spirit has intellect and Holy Spirit has emotion. Could we knock that on the head? Um, I've only got a little bit of time left. Could we look briefly at chapter th lesson 13? How false religion misrepresents God, please. Sorry. It's page 55. Yeah. And it's the very start of section 2. Section 2. I've got to go by 10.30. Yes, we've, we've got to go in a minute yeah. as well. So. so just very briefly, um, if yeah. I read paragraph two, how does false religion misrepresent God by its actions? It says, false religion does not treat people as Jehovah does. The Bible says that false religion sins have massed together clear up to heaven. For centuries, religions have meddled in politics, supported wars, and caused or approved the deaths of countless numbers of people. Some religious leaders enjoy a lavish lifestyle and demand money from their followers to pay for it. These actions prove that they do not even know God, yet alone have the right to misrepresent him. Am I correct in assuming that you're saying that religions that are involved in politics or who have supported warfare are false religions and religious leaders, I mean you see some of them with on TV with gold Rolex watches, um, yeah. Religious leaders who enjoy a lavish lifestyle and demand money are obviously fake. They're, they don't represent Jehovah. That's what it's saying. Yes. It, in the sense of, you know, we can see priests blessing even nuclear weapons. Um, blessing like, um, for example, with um, the guidance of the clergy, even with Putin's armies recently, they're backing him and what he's doing. Jesus said, you know, that my kingdom is no part of the world. And when they were going to make him king, he withdrew. Now you would think, what better king could you have than Jesus Christ? You know, he, he could feed them, um, he, he fed thousands, he cured sickness, he brought people back from the dead. But he refused to be made an earthly king. Yes. Um, I've been on JW.org, your watchtower for the 15th of November, 1982, pages 5 and 6, states that the United Nations is of the devil. It's one of the beasts of the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. Agreed? Is that yeah. agreed? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Why then did the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York join the United Nations in 1992? Lloyd Barry, one of your governing body members, signed out the documentation for Association of the United Nations as an NGO in 1992. And the Guardian newspaper broke this article on the 8th of October 2001, um, causing, causing thousands of people to write to the UN uh, asking for details about this. What's that? Uh, um, what's that again? Can you give us those references again and we'll look it up? Um, the Watchtower oh. for the 15th of November 1982, pages 5 and 6. Basically, if you read the whole article, it says the United Nations is of the devil. It's one of the false yeah. beasts of the Book of Revelation. Yeah, but what did you say about Lloyd Berry? Well, he, he signed the documentation to um, for association of for membership of the United Nations as an NGO of the Watchtower Bible and Tract Tra Society of... Um, New, New York. So the New York Corporation, not the Pennsylvania Corporation, the New York Corporation joined the United Nations as an NGO. And I have a letter. So where, where's that information coming from, Robert? It's just that we want to it was it published in the Guardian newspaper of the 8th of October 2001. They had three articles pointing out that the Watchtower organization were hypocrites because they said that the United Nations was of the devil, yet they joined the United Nations. Now, the Watchtower has never sued the Guardian newspaper for this article and for the Guardian accusing them of gross hypocrisy. I mean, you know, if this is all a pack of lies, why didn't the Watchtower take the back. Guardian newspaper to court and sue them for libel and sue yeah. them for two, three hundred million dollars? They never did. No, and I can't, Neither of us can comment 
um, Robert, because we have, we've never heard that before, so we um, can't make it. I've 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 got a letter from Paul Hoffiel. He's the section chief of the NGO section, Department of Public Information. It's on United Nations headed paper. It's dated the 11th of October, 2001. I'll read it briefly. To whom it may concern, recently the NGO section has been receiving numerous inquiries regarding the association of the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York with the Department of Public Information, DPI. This organization as applied for association with DPI in 1991 and was granted association in 1992. By accepting association with DPI, the organization agreed to meet criteria for association, including support and respect of the principles of the Charter of the United Nations and commitment and means to conduct effective information programs with its constituents and to a broader audience about UN activities. In October 2001, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York requested termination of, of its association with DPI Following this request, the DPI has made a decision to disassociate the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society of New York as of the 9th of October 2001. We appreciate your interest in the work of the United Nations. Yours sincerely, Paul Hoffiel, Chief, NGO Section, Department of Public Information, on UN-headed paper, and the Watchtower has never taken them to court over this. Thousands okay. of these letters were distributed because thousands of Jehovah's Witnesses at the time and ex-Jehovah's Witnesses wrote in, shocked at United Nations membership. Yeah. And the Watchtower never took Paul Hoffiel or the United Nations to court for the distribution of this letter. If it's a pack of lies, why didn't they yeah. go to court? Yeah. Yeah, we, we, we can't comment because we don't know. So never we heard, look, never so heard we would look that up. Just as a, as a broader comment, the Watchtower doesn't normally uh, attract society, doesn't take people to court normally. Um, well, they're, they're because... actually in court an awful <laughs> lot. They're actually in yeah. court an awful lot. In... And they, <laughs> uh, they do take people to court. There is, yeah. um, there is a British man who makes Lego models. He has little Lego models and he moves them around. It's called Dub Town. And it's a town of Lego pieces and the Lego pieces he pretends are Jehovah's Witnesses and he films them and he puts them up on YouTube and the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society is taking him to court at the present time in America. He's a poor guy living in England and he's found an American lawyer who I believe is representing him. I don't know whether he's doing it for free. He probably is because how could he afford to hire an American lawyer? But he So a multi-billion pound American corporation is taking this British man to court for making Lego models and putting Lego models on YouTube. Again, I can't, we, can't, I can't. we can't comment because we don't But, but know. you've got 90 plus years experience between you. you you'd yes, think that- but we don't have these particular instances. We right. what, what about um, the so fact, what, what about the fact that the Watchtower was given shares by James McCann in the RAN Cam Engine Corporation? This is a, a, an American company that makes engines for drones, drones used in military service. And over five million know? shares were given to the Watchtower, the Watchtower, and they accepted it. I mean, if they're God's how organization. How do you know, Robert? How do you know that these things are true? Because people are making these claims and the Watchtower is not suing them. Because it's but all how true. How do you know they're true? Personally? Because the Watchtower doesn't sue. When, when, when people make the claims on the internet, all over the internet, that the Watchtower has accepted shares in a company that makes engines for military drones called the Ramcam Engine Corporation, and James mm -hmm. McCann gave five million shares to the Watchtower, the Watchtower doesn't sue, because they'd be laughed out of court because I, it's true. We don't know. We what can't a, comment, but I, I know I have total confidence in the brothers that work very, very hard to um, give us God's word to help us to make our lives better to help us lead good lives um, I have confidence we both do in these brothers who do that um, and very often accusations have been made against Jehovah's Witnesses 
from time to time through the years. We do get this, Robert. What is the difference? And what 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 is the difference between somebody having blind faith in something? and somebody having a true faith, a true biblical faith. What's the difference between a true biblical faith and somebody having blind faith? Hebrews tells us that faith is built on knowledge. Right, so, we... so, so, so why don't you investigate? If you've been in the watchtower between you for 92 years, why don't you investigate these things so the next person you speak to, you can give a better defence of your beliefs and a better, because you actually understand it better. Why would, how would that help us to believe the Bible better? If you get sidetracked into doing all sorts of other things that may or may not be true, and knowing as we do that the um, Jehovah's Witnesses have been accused of all sorts of things over the years, all sorts. It's a sidetrack, it's uh, something that Satan uses to defer our attention to other things. Our main goal in life is to promote God's word what? through the Bible. What about the Watchtower admitting that they have had in the Watchtower magazine, admitting that they, the Watchtower magazine, have involvement in warfare. I I haven't read that. I I've never that. read that. The, the, the Watchtower... The, the, years ago... Could, can I just ago, make my point? The, the Watchtower... Yeah. Thank, thank you very much. The Watchtower for the 1st of June, 1947, page 173, talks about the situation in Australia during the Second World War. Yeah. Right, that finished two years before in 1945. Now, during the Second World War, this Watchtower article talks about how young men who went for Bethel service were sent, this is only in Australia, this is the Australian situation, to work in canteens on military bases or, quote, working in machine shops producing instruments of war. It doesn't name the company, but I found out it was the Taylorcraft Aircraft Corporation a big company by Australian standards that makes aircraft owned by a Jehovah's Witness called Mr. Taylor. And during the Second World War, obviously, Mr. Taylor employed lots of other Jehovah's Witnesses and the Bethel was sending young people to work for Taylorcraft during the Second World War. And Taylorcraft was making military aircraft. So that's an example of Jehovah's Witnesses in the Second World War supporting the military. And yet your book says, for centuries, religions have meddled in politics, supported wars and caused and approved of the deaths of countless numbers of people. The, and it goes on. These actions prove they do not even know God, yet alone have the right to represent him. How can the watchtower... Have, have you ever looked into the fact that you mentioned World War Two? Have you ever looked into the fact how many witnesses were killed in concentration camps because they would not do, support do you, the war? Do you honestly think I don't know about this? Of course yes, I know about this. The Jehovah's Witnesses were appeasing Hitler. Rutherford, Judge Rutherford, the then leader in 19... In, the 1934 yearbook was published at the end of 1933, yeah? Okay. Right. On page 137... In the Germany section of the 1934 yearbook, talking about the new German government, we read a careful examination of our books and literature would disclose the fact that the very high ideals held and promulgated by the present national government are set forth and in and endorsed and strongly emphasized in our publications and show that Jehovah God will see to it that the high ideals in due to... He, he refers to the very high ideals of the new Nazi government in Germany, very high ideals, in the 1934 yearbook on page 137. And I don't have time to go into the Declaration of Facts, which is early on in that section. But early on in that section, he talks about the wicked people called the Jews. And because he's trying to appease Hitler, he, he, no, he criticizes no. the Jews. I've got the 1934 yearbook. 
I've okay, got a copy of it. it this isn't yeah. something off the internet. I've got a 1934 okay. yearbook. And it says... Send that, send that what you've read to us. Um, send it across. Would you text me your email by text? Yeah. I, I don't know how to send things over Zoom or anything like that. You have to text no, me no, your no. email address. And I can I can I can send it to you, but the nineteen thirty four nineteen thirty four yearbook page one hundred and thirty four, uh, it is falsely. What it, pages? The first quote was page one hundred and thirty seven, which talks about the very high ideals of the new uh, Nazi government in Germany. Uh, earlier on, and I'm looking at page one hundred and thirty four. It says, it is falsely charged by our, by our enemies that we have received financial support for our work from the Jews. Nothing is further from the truth. Up to this hour, there has never been the slightest bit of money contributed to our work by Jews. We are faithful followers of Jesus Christ. And um, So, actually, that wasn't the quote I wanted to read. It's page 130. Yeah, it's another reference on page 100. Yes, here it is. This is also page 134. The greatest, because uh, I'm I'm looking at scans, because I can't have hundreds of books around me, so I'm looking at a scan. Page 134 of the 1934 yearbook. The greatest and most oppressive empire on earth is the Anglo-American Empire. By that is meant the British Empire of which the United States of America forms a part. It has been the commercial Jews of the British American Empire that have built up and carried on big business as a means of exploiting and oppressing the peoples of many nations. This, this is part of a letter called the Declaration of Facts that was sent to every government official in Nazi Germany when the Nazis came to power by Rutherford to appease them, to say, we hate the Jews too. OK, um, I'll read on. This fact is particularly applied to the cities of London and New York, the stronghold of big business. This fact is so manifested in America that there is a proverb concerning the city of New York which says the Jews own it, the Irish Catholics rule it, and the Americans pay the bills. And it's, it's page after page in early Watchtower literature at the time condemning the Jews as evil and, and wicked. Um, in a book called Life, um, which I've got a copy of it. So again, I'm looking at a scan from my own book. If I can just find life. Uh, life. I think this could be it. Page 293. No. Well, in a book called Life, or maybe it's Light, Maybe I'm maybe I'm getting confused. Um, he condemns the Jews even more harshly, but Rutherford did this to appease Hitler. And when Hitler didn't um, um, agree with Rutherford's um, overtures to him, um, he did what the Jehovah's Witnesses have done in Russia recently. They wrote millions of letters to the German to the German government. Um, I know you did this in 2016 to the Russian government so that the office of the president, Mr. Putin, couldn't function in Russia because I think he and a court had received either 48 million letters and parcels between them from Jehovah's Witnesses all over the world. Or they had um, or it was Mr. Putin who received 40, 48 million letters. But you did the same thing in with to the to the Nazis. You just wrote many, many letters to them. And of course, this turned the Nazis against Jehovah's Witnesses, and that's why they were imprisoned um, yes, because of what no. because of what Rutherford did through this campaign problem. attacking attacking the Nazis. Um, and yeah, um, but even in, can it, I can I say something yes. here? Well, in in um, the concentration camps, all sorts of concentration camps in Germany where German brothers were, um, our German brothers were incarcerated. They were given by the authorities a letter that if they signed... Yes, saying I, I, they I, I know that. You're telling me things that I know. You're telling me things that I know. And, and that if they renounce their faith and don't talk to other people about it, 
they could be set free. Yes. Now, you R have R to Rutherford, Ru yes, Rutherford made an offer. Rutherford made an offer to Hitler that they would not distribute literature in Germany. OK, they would not distribute literature in Germany and Hitler turned down the offer. It's, I've literally got another call in three minutes, so I'm going to have to go. If you want to sum up, I've got to go in three, 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 three minutes. OK, Rob, it's, we, sometimes we'll have to do a, agree to disagree on okay. things. It's, uh, it's been stimulating to hear your, your views. It's got to, I hope, you know, the, it's an interchange of, of views. Thank you for contacting us. Thank you for sharing your okay. your views with us. Um, obviously, I, <laughs> we don't agree and you don't agree, but we've tried. OK, thank so, you. Thank you very much. I'm yeah. sorry. I apologise to Christine for interrupting you. I do have to go. No. And all the best. Robert. Thank you. All the best. Lovely to speak to you. You take thank you. care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.